don't know how you follow that. I mean, <laughs> but we can try. Uh, are you ready for another microdose of community as medicine? You don't have to dance this time, so. Oh. <laughs> Anybody who wasn't here last night is like, what? <laughs> so let's start here. How many of you were here two years ago? We were in the South Bay, and Tristan Harris gave an incredible closing talk. Can I see hand? Oh, yeah, okay. Well, he said something at the end of that talk that I've been thinking about for two years. He said, we have become addicted to attention. And I've been thinking about this because on one hand, clearly, he's right. There are these incredibly contorted, compulsive, addictive ways that we can wrap our lives around pulling for specific forms of attention. And I think there's something tricky about this as well. If we can continue the metaphor that I started yesterday about food and nutrition and nourishment and human connection. I have a dear friend who self-identifies as a food addict. And she said to me, Liz, the hardest thing about it is that abstinence is not an option. Right? You can't go cold turkey on food, at least not for very long. And I want to suggest this that our need for human connection, in fact, human attention, to be seen and known and gotten and to know ourselves through the eyes of others is no different than our need for food. In that, it's hardwired. It's there when we are babies, it's there when we are elders, it's there when we're celebrating, it's there when we're suffering. I don't care how many silent retreats you do, how much inner child work you do. It's not going away. So there's no exiling the part of us that needs human attention any more than there is excising or exiling the part of us that needs food. We've got to find a way to go forward together. So my friend, she said to me, paradoxically, the first step is not to try to stop eating the Skittles or the chips or whatever it is. She said the first step is to establish regular, nourishing, satisfying, delicious meals. And I don't know about you, but that checks out with my experience because if I am hungry and you put a bag of chocolate chip cookies anywhere in my vicinity, I will demolish them and I will feel lousy. And then when the sugar high, you know, it wears off and then I will eat more. But if I am nourished, if I'm full, if I've had a really good meal and then you put the cookies near me, I mean, make no mistake, I will still eat the cookies. But after <laughs> two or three or even four, at some reasonable moment, I'm just, I'm good. And I think that it's similar with human attention and connection. That when we are well fed, we are much less prone to binging on toxic mimics of connection. So I'll return to the questions that I opened with yesterday. How might we create a society in which we are nourished and full? And we are skilled in generating that nourishment. We're not just being handed fish. We know how to fish. And we are regeneratively nourishing each other, not by clinical health care, but by default social structures that make that the norm. That's my quest. I want to acknowledge that there are cultures and traditions that have done and today are doing a much better job at this than we are. And there were times, even in this culture, when we had some of this going on, but I think it was at a cost. Because there were times in our history when you grew up in this culture and then you lived where your parents lived and you did the work that your parents did and you worshipped where they worshipped and you wore what they wore and you fit in because to risk being different was to risk disapproval, was to risk exile, was to risk your survival. So, at least the way I see it, we're not going back. We're not making anything great again. We are going forward <laughs> to new ways together. <laughs> Which brings us to our microdose du jour. Um, how did it go with vitality? Yesterday, 
Oh, oh, okay. Did anybody notice that trying to show up with vitality is actually kind of vulnerable? <laughs> That's often my experience. And so our experience today is around vulnerability. Hat tip to Brene Brown. Yeah. She says, vulnerability is uncertainty, it's risk, it's emotional exposure. But vulnerability is not weakness, and it's actually our most accurate measure of courage. So, if you want to go on this little adventure with me, I'm going to guide something. And this is just a reminder that I'm making invitations and you are always at choice. Good? Okay. If you're the kind of person who has like a notebook or a journal, you might want it near you for this. And if you don't, it's not a problem at all. So, I invite you to just get really comfy in your chair. And if you like to close your eyes, you're welcome to, and you don't need to. So I invite you, as you sort of settle in here, to join me on a journey of imagination. And I invite you to imagine that you could zoom out from your whole life, like you're zooming up and back and your whole life is down in front of you, kind of small. And with this magical zoom power, I invite you to zoom in for a moment on some aspects of your life where things are going great. Where there might be fulfillment, gratitude, abundance, goodness. Let's just see if you can feel the sweetness as you look at those aspects of your world. And then if you're ready, you can release those and then zoom over to look at those aspects of life where if you're human, it, it's hard. There might be grief or loss or fear or frustration or just aspects where you just don't know how it's all going to work out. Just take a moment to feel the reality of those aspects of your life. And now, if you're following on this journey, I invite you to call to mind the most unconditionally loving, benevolent person or being you have ever known or maybe never known. This could be a person who's living or passed on, someone who gets you, loves you, is in your corner. Maybe it's a person, maybe it's a spiritual figure. Just see if you can see their face or feel their presence. And imagine for a moment that with this superpower, they could see and feel all of what you are dealing with in life right now. The abundance, the struggle, the fear. If by some magic, they could speak to you or write you a letter, what is it that they would say to you? What words of wisdom, perspective, compassion would they offer you with this full visibility? When I do this, it's always my grandmother and she would write me a letter saying, Dear Elizabeth, you are already doing enough. So just take a moment. I'll be quiet. You can either just be with it or you could actually write that letter that they would write to you. Put on a really quiet song in the background here and I'll get you back in about 90 seconds.
All right. So if you're still writing, still being with that, just keep on going. And as you feel ready, I'm going to invite you to turn from this tender place towards somebody near you. You may know them, you may not. And you get to connect with them however you want. This could be absolute silence. This could be sharing tissues. You could check in about what that was like. You could share your letter. I'll give you just a few moments to see what it's like to meet someone in this plate, place of vulnerability. I'll get you back in a couple minutes. Go ahead. All right, I'm gonna start bringing your attention back this way. See if you can wrap up that conversation. Wrapping up this conversation and then just bringing your attention back here for one more moment. What's it like to connect from that space? There are a lot of tissues moving around in the crowd. <laughs> so our first superfood of human connection was vitality and our second here is vulnerability. And so I'm grateful for your willingness to go there. I think our next speaker might even take you further in there. My invitation, of course, is that until we meet again, which will be one last time tomorrow afternoon, that you look for opportunities to bring forward that vulnerability in your connections. And sometimes it can be as simple as, I'd like to connect with you and I don't really know how. That might be where you start. Thank you so, so much. I'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you.